themselves. Okay, let's look at a Malaysian icon, Tunku Abdul Rahman, otherwise known very fondly as Bapa, the father of Malaysia. Oh, he had the vision of a united Malaysia. That um, has been revived now under different names. Now, you have slammed those who champion Malay unity as Machiavellian or practitioners of Machia Machiavellian politics and people who are not actually working towards Malay unity. What did you mean when you called them practitioners of Machiavellian politics? Yeah, I think this is a bit of a error. Um, but I think there's some people who would argue that oh, Malay unity is uh, is a priority because we are Malay. The Malays are under threat from non-Malays, right? Uh, that is what I I, I I oppose. I see no no problem with uh, championing uh, unity of of all sorts. How is ideas pushing Malaysia towards one Malaysia? It's not something that we explicitly say we're trying to do. I mean, we, we are interested in our principles, we are interested, and we are inspired by uh, the, the likes of Tunku Abdul Rahman. But we believe it is not in opposition to, to what the Prime Minister means at one, by one Malaysia. Um, you know, if, if every Malaysian um, could, uh, you know, in, again, our principles, individual liberty, free markets, limited government, and rule of law, we believe that if these principles were widely uh, understood and practiced by Malaysians, not only by individuals but also by institutions, then one Malaysia will have will arrive by default. So these institutions not 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 being guided by the right principles. You have mentioned the prevalence of cynicism and distrust. Can you elaborate on what you mean when you say these institutions others are being poisoned? Let's take the police for example. You know, if you go to a mama, or if, if you're in the office and you're just chatting to your colleagues, inevitably, uh, you know, I mean, through my personal experience, someone will talk about an instance where they, they got caught by a cop, right? And th there will be instances where people talk about how they were enticed into offering a bribe, for example. So it's these everyday stories that create a sense of cynicism in our institutions. And as a result, whenever some big reform is championed uh, by a politician, uh, you know, p particularly you know, to do with the police, for example, um, a, a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, right, you know, that's not going to happen. They can't because the institution is already too corrupt. And don't you think the advent of social media can actually help erase the cynicism? Well, it, it ought to, it ought to. Um, but I think there's, it, that has not sort of seeped through. I mean, one of the interesting... Uh, applications to come out, actually, of, of, of social media. I don't know if it's social media per se, but certainly technology, is that the, the police in one of the states has uh, launched uh, an iPhone application uh, to, to alert, so that users can alert uh, the police to, uh, you know, emergencies. I don't know how, how often this is being used at the moment, but I think it's one, it's one attempt by the police to regain trust. Begin the public trust. But um, unfortunately, there are still too many controversial cases, you know, like the shooting of a 15 year old boy, um, heavy handed tactics after, used after the Brexit 2.0 rally in July, and uh, these are more in the public's uh, mind, I think. On July the 9th, 2011, Kuala Lumpur saw 10,000 and 20,000 Malaysians take to the streets to cry for change. Their vision was for elections in the country to be clean and fair. The Bursa 2.0 rally has also been called a war for democracy. When you saw people out on the streets calling for change, uh, electoral reform, did that change any of your existing convictions? No, I think it was a manifestation of feelings that we, that you know, most observers knew existed. Um, what was surprising was the extent of the uh, crackdown, in my opinion, because in the weeks leading up to that, there seemed to have been a reconciliation 
uh, well, not maybe, maybe not a reconciliation, but a solution to the issue of whether they should be in a stadium or not, or an, if so, which stadium. But unfortunately, somewhere along the line, the communication broke down, uh, the rally happened on the streets anyway, and the police were out in force to, uh, to quash it. It's been several months now since the uh, street rallies. Do you, do you still feel the impact of, of the rally itself, the feelings after that, the damage control, are you still feeling Yeah, I think what, what, what's really happened is that the government is sure that they don't want to see in per se 3.0, right? And it could be, it could be said that you know, the Malaysia Day reforms that were announced by the Prime Minister, the repeal of the Internal Security Act, the relaxation of the Printing, and, Printing Presses and Publication Act, um, you know, all of that, you know, those reforms in a way were enabled or pressured by uh, Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's been said that you know, the reason the Prime Minister made those announcements was to assuage those who were on the streets, to say, look, the government is responding, um, we will um, liberalise, we will relax some of the authoritarian measures available to us. More. On a lighter note, he has been engaging in in almost ostentatiously cool hip and happening activities like appearing on a radio program, attending concerts. For someone who is young, hip, cool and happening like yourself, is this act, if it is an act, convincing? It's a brilliant strategy um, to, 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 be, to be visible amongst those who are not political the, who, amongst those who are not politically inclined at all, right? Someone who, who, who doesn't really follow politics will, will say, hey, our Prime Minister's on radio, isn't that cool? I think it will have an impact there. But it is even cooler to be consistent in, in liberalisation, to be consistent in believing in press freedom, for example. You know, I think if he did those things, he will be regarded as a cool Prime Minister for, for a long time. After the break, the confessions of a toko. And I know what will happen if I get back into it.